What's going on, everyone? So today, um, well, first, let's address the elephant in the room. I got into a fight with some hair clippers. We'll actually talk about that on the blog on uh, Monday, um, later on in the week. But um, today, we're going to be looking at Foundry Virtual Tabletop. And I'm going to be kind of giving you guys my first impressions. I haven't actually loaded up the software other than to just kind of set it up a little bit. Um, but other than that, I haven't actually opened up a world or anything like that. So I'm very interested to see kind of like what I kind of find here as I kind of dive into it. Um, it definitely seems like a very interesting um, con contribution to the virtual tabletop space. And I'm glad that there is actually a third player in here because then that means that every single virtual tabletop is going to have to up their game no matter what. More competition is a good thing. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to like kind of go over, jump into the software for the first time. We're going to kind of go over and kind of explore a little bit. And then I'm going to give you guys kind of my final thoughts. But then I will have some tutorials and stuff like that in the future because right now there there is a need for it because um, it does seem that um, at least as far as like some of the how-to pages and stuff like that, there is some stuff in there, but it seems like there's probably more that needs to be done. So um, if you guys are new to the channel, my name is Howard. This is the Blue Collar DM YouTube channel, the channel dedicated to breaking down those barriers for new players and dungeon masters alike. I actually stream on this channel Monday, Wednesday, Friday here on YouTube and on Twitch. Link for the Twitch stream down in the description below. Also, if you end up enjoying this video, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified when other stuff like this comes out in the future. So without further ado, let's actually jump into the video. All right, guys, so now that we're over here at the computer, we can actually jump into Foundry Virtual Tabletop. So I've done a little bit of work in the background to kind of set everything up. I actually brought in the uh, Dungeons and Dragons game system. I've done a couple of things in here. Um, just to kind of get this thing started because uh, there is a little bit of background, but I haven't actually opened up or created the game world yet So I'm interested to see what kind of like my first impressions are as I kind of open up the software And I want to kind of share that with you as we're kind of going forward. So we're gonna create a world um, We'll just use Dragon more because that's what I use on my home game um, Yeah, da data path. Yeah, world name game system fifth edition uh, looks like you can schedule your next session, which is kind of cool um, and then we can put in a world description. Um, we'll just say that this is a test world. Actually, let's just change this name to test because um, I'm just trying to figure out how the software works. So let's create our world. Oh, I do need to put in um, this. So yeah, we'll call that test as well. And let's create a world and yeah, let's jump in. All right, so I'm in. Um, looks like we've got a chat box over here on the right. Um, looks like there's some things that had to get thrown in there. Um, so it's Bring in some uh, migration software, which sure. It looks like we got some hotkeys down here, which I really like, um, especially as the GM. It's always nice to have some hotkeys down at the bottom. Uh, we can choose to have public, private, blind roles. That's cool. Um, and then let's see what we got over here. So we've got our chat box. Oh, it looks like we have an encounter tab. We've got some search scenes. Um, I assume that means for maps, um, actors, which I, from my understanding is what player characters are. Um, so we can always create a new one. Um, looks like we can create a scene too by the looks of it, um, which looks like it creates a battle map, which is really cool. Um, we can choose the size of our grids and stuff like that and how big it is. Um, and then there's obviously this like lighting and vision, which is kind of cool. So I'm very interested to kind of play around with that as we're kind of going forward. Um, we've got some ambiance and atmosphere, so we can play some audio. We can have some weather. Looks like you have some standard weather effects here of leaves, rain, and snow, which is really cool. Um, don't have any audio on the playlist, which is understandable. Um, and I bet you you can um, change some of these as you're going forward, and you can add some more weather effects, because there's a lot of extension modules that you can kind of throw in there, too. Um, looks like right now the control permission is set to GM only, which is what it should be. Um, then we've got a darkness and we got a fog, we've got global illumination, we've got token vision already turned on by default, which is kind of nice to have. Um, then we have the square grids, which is what I need. Um, grid distance five feet, yeah, everything's defaulted pretty well. Um, still waiting for this uh, migration to go away. Um, oh, it looks like I can just click the eyes and make it go away, cool. Um, we can name our scene, we can have some notes, um, and we can pick a file image from our... You have to, again, throw it in here in order to do that, but hey, that should be easy enough. Um, we're going to close that. I'm actually going to just delete this scene just because I don't really have anything to add to it right now. Um, then we can create some player characters, it looks like. Um, so yeah, character or NPC. So we can say, we'll just call this one Jimmy because we love using the name Jimmy. Create an actor, and then it looks like... We can throw stuff, maybe we can throw stuff in from the compendium. I'm curious if there is items directory, maybe? Global tables, music, 
Compendium packs, here we go. Um, so we got starter heroes, it looks like. We got some already made out, which is cool. Um, let's see, it doesn't look like we have races, but we have classes. Um, I've been reading in some of the comments that uh, races will be a thing hopefully introduced uh, later on down the line. So, um, you know, it is what it is right now. Um, but uh, we'll see how that goes in the, in the future. Um, right now, we'll just say this Jimmy is a human because that's the easiest one to do. Um, background, doesn't look like a, maybe under class feature. No, class features are those. Although that artwork is really cool. Um, yeah, it looks like we'll have to like put in our own custom backgrounds and stuff like that too. Um, until, um, either get some assets in here. I think that's part of it is that I don't have any of the actual, like, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, like, um, um, assets in here. Although I don't know, um, right now it seems like there isn't a ton of functionality, but there is a, um, a way to bring your D&D Beyond content in from what I've been kind of looking into some of the stuff. So I'm interested to see how that kind of works. Oh, we can upload a file. Okay. That's cool. I'm glad that we can do that. That helps me a little bit. Um, I do have some tokens on my computer already, so why don't I just go in and try to find one? Um, you guys can't see what I'm doing, but I'm able to upload a token, it looks like, so I'm just gonna go out and find one of my player character tokens that I've been using on uh, my normal campaign. Um, so just give me one second here while I go and find them. Um, we'll use... We'll use our buddy Smash. Smash PNG. We'll use that select file. Hey, there we go. Look at that. It's in there. That's sweet. Um, that's awesome. Okay, so we've got Smash in here. Um, I mean, I know he's a Kenku, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. We'll just call him uh, Chaotic Good, sure. Um, I like the style of this. It's very, um, reminds me a lot of FGU to an extent, um, especially with some of the um, kind of, the way it's kind of organized. It's not like very, um, it's much more flavored um, like the uh, the FG the Fantasy Grounds interface is kind of flavored on unlike Roll Twenty where it's more of like a, it's definitely obviously an online internet based system. Um, looks like we can change all of our ability scores. So um, we're a human, so we'll just say um, I didn't pick a class yet. So I'm wondering where that comes in. Biography? No. Features? Class levels? Hey, hey, there we go. Let's add a class level. Edit item, no. There's gotta be a way to do it, I'm sure. If I can drag fighter in. Hey, that works, sweet. So it looks, it does actually work again, a lot like um, the uh, uh, Fantasy Grounds Unity kind of interface, which is I really like a lot, is that it's kind of played out that way, which is fun. Um, and then if I click on fighter, um, it gives me some information. And then if I click on fighter here, it gives you some details, mostly just about what I have. We have two starting skills. We don't get any spell progression, okay. Just curious to see what um, I can play around in here. Um, active abilities, passive abilities, attributes. Um, looks like it's a lot, um, you're gonna have to do a lot of information um, throwing in there yourself. Um, we don't have a subclass yet, so whatever. Um, so we get a day 10 hit die. Um, it looks like it doesn't change that on here off the bat, which is fine for now. I mean, th this um, software is still kind of in beta, so like I understand a lot of it. I think a lot of the um, effort's been put on the map side of things, so um, but not so much on these uh, character sides of things yet, uh, just because of the fact there is no um, licensing agreement, I believe, with. Dungeons and Dragons yet. I think it's coming, um, but I'm not 100% sure, so don't quote me on that. Um, but looks like, um, so if we, actually, I'm curious, if I change my constitution modifier, is it gonna change my health? No, it does not, okay. So, um, good to know. Um, but it should change, did it change my modifiers? Yes, it did, okay. So we do have that. So it does do, um, it does have the, that part of the game system in it. So we'll just give our guy a standard array of uh, 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and eight. And we'll just like add one. So we'll just say, oops, not 1510. Although it's nice that it does that. And it looks like it puts it all in there for you as well. 15, uh, uh, this is a 13. Ugh, I need to actually pay attention to what I'm doing. Um, so if this is the 12, that's gonna be a 13. And it's gonna be 11. So we're just using basic human stuff. And then our eight charisma is gonna turn into a nine. So 
Um, okay, so we got that. Um, looks like we can add senses and stuff like that. We don't have any real, we don't have dark vision, so that doesn't really change anything. We can add our languages, or damages, resistances, proficiencies. Okay, so that's cool. Um, it doesn't look like it has, like, the innate, like, um, ability to kind of drag and drop it all in automatically, um, which is kind of a bummer, but I'm sure, um, yeah, it doesn't look like it has that. Um, but you can drag and drop in your, your particular, like, action surge, you can drag and drop in, you can drag in your fighting style, which is nice. Um, so we're gonna have to kind of do a little bit of more um, work ourselves to kind of make this software work for us, at least from the player character side of things, which um, for me is not that big of a deal, but for some people that can be a deal breaker depending on how you play it. Um, but I like the way it's kind of set up right now. Um, and then with fighter, let's actually bring that back up. Um, we get two starting skills, but it doesn't say what they are. So I'm gonna have to, um, I'm gonna be bringing up on another window, just kind of some of the stuff, but um, Actually, this is probably enough for now. It gives me a good idea of like what things I'm gonna actually need to contribute to the software in order to make a character sheet work out. So that's good for there. Um, so that's our actors and it looks like they just come up here. Search items, I assume create item. Oh, we can create our own special custom items. So that's cool. Um, yeah, cool. And then we can make journal entries, looks like. We can make sub journals by the looks of it and we can name these journals so that's cool we'll just delete this for now and tables we can create our own tables probably like encounter tables and stuff like that yeah we can or any like a treasure table or anything that's kind of cool so we'll um let's delete that looks like we can import some data so maybe we can find files that can actually come in here and make our lives a little bit easier we can put in some playlists um this is our compendium again. Looks like we can actually grab our spells, which is nice. Yeah, that's that's gonna be helpful for our spellcasters. I like the artwork that they use actually with a lot of these. It's actually really cool. Yeah, I like this a lot. Um, and then just some general configurations, controls, some wiki pages, which is good to have. Um, invitation links too. Um, and then we have a tab here. Oh, that actually just brings it to the side, which is actually really nice. So if you don't want to have this whole place cluttered up with all this kind of stuff, that helps. So that's pretty interesting. Um, so now I'm going to actually dig into this a little bit more. So I'll um, cut this right now and then um, I'll give you guys kind of my final thoughts here at the end. All right guys, so now that I've kind of played around with the base software here with Foundry Built the Tabletop, I'll give you some of my thoughts. So it definitely seems like there's a little bit more work that we have to do in the back end as far as whether we're a player character, dungeon master, or anything like that to kind of make it work. There's also a lot of modules that can be added into the software for free, um, which is kind of cool because you can kind of customize your virtual, your Foundry virtual tabletop experience the way you want it to be. Uh, I also like the way the interface is set up. The software runs really smoothly, which I also kind of like. Um, it definitely seems like it's one of the more, um, um, computer friendly uh, versions of a virtual tabletop that I've seen out there. I've like with uh, Roll20 being web based, it can get kind of bogged down. Um, Fantasy Grounds Unity right now is still kind of in beta and they're optimizing it. So it can, when pulling stuff from compendiums, it gets a little bogged down. So I do like what I'm seeing here with Foundry. Um, it does, like I said, it requires a lot more setup for you as far as the player characters are concerned, but I'm interested to see and kind of play around with some of those modules. Um, right now, when it comes to um, price points and stuff like that, the fact that you get this software as the dungeon master or the or the uh, game master and the fact that you can bring in your players for free um, and give them full access to everything is really really cool the fact that there is a module that can integrate with dnd beyond so you can play basically all of your character sheets and have the roles integrate over so you're basically only using the software as maybe a map space and some storytelling um, note taking and stuff like that so you can kind of integrate it that way um, it's a good way to also like just integrate anything that like say if you own a lot of assets on D&D Beyond you can actually utilize them in here as opposed to um, having to just kind of uh, play it via D&D Beyond and then also have like a separate tabletop it will integrate in for you so you can kind of manage your D&D &D Beyond character sheet over here on like a tablet or a phone or on a separate window and then it'll roll in um, on your Foundry virtual tabletop which is really cool because then like everyone can kind of see everything. It works out pretty pretty well. I'm curious to see kind of how this kind of develops in the future. 
Um, for a $50 price tag for just one person um, to have the license and just be able to play with it, I think it's definitely worth it. Um, it definitely seems like something that is, um, you know, still in development, like 1.0 still hasn't technically come out yet. But I think in the current state of the software, the fact that if you're jumping in right now and you're going to be able to get a license for 50 bucks, I think it's definitely worth it, especially to jump on while it's still early. And I'm curious to see kind of like how it develops in the future. There's a lot of really strong, powerful, dynamic lighting tools in there I was able to play with. Um, so all in all, it seems like a really great system. Now, if you guys have any questions or anything like that on Foundry Virtual Tabletop as we're kind of moving forward, I will do some tutorials and kind of dig in deeper into some of the features and stuff like that for you guys in the future. But if you do have questions, leave them down in the comment section. Also come down to the live stream. I stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday here on YouTube and on Twitch. Link for that down in the description below. Also, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so that way you get notified when more stuff about Foundry comes out or anything else related to Dungeons & Dragons and Virtual Tabletop. I hope you guys learned something today or at least enjoyed what you kind of see here. And until next time, happy gaming.